eBeams at History support versus Hibernate Inverse. So Hibernate Inverse is really an application style auditing uh, as opposed to eBeam at History, which is based on a, a database centric approach in SQL 2011. So in terms of what maintains the audit entries, uh, with Inverse it's Hibernate. So insert, update, delete events occur, uh, they're listened to, and then inserts uh, go into the audit tables based on those. Um, with Add History, it's based on either database triggers or it's internal to the database based on uh, SQL 2011. In terms of DDL generation, Inverse will generate history tables. So these are additional tables to your, your standard tables. And eBeam does the same. It generates history tables, but it also generates database triggers and a database view. Uh, so there's an asterisk here. If, if you're using a database with built-in support, then eBeam doesn't need to generate those. Uh, in terms of bulk updates, are bulk updates included in the audit log? So no, if you do a Hibernate bulk update statement, there will be no entries in the audit logs for that in the audit tables. Um, similarly, if you do any external updates, uh, external to Hibernate, no, those won't be included in the audit logs. Whereas those are both yes here with this database centric approach. Uh, in terms of performance, there is a difference in that um, the audit entries get inserted from the application. So we've got these inserts going from the application server into the database. Whereas on this side, it's all database centric or database server side, if you like. So um, the triggers will fire and will get their data from locally in the database to insert into the history tables. <coughs> in terms of partial update, updates, um, if we have a partially populated beam and do an update, then we don't have the old values for the unloaded properties. So those entries can't go into the audit log. Uh, whereas on this, this database centric approach, the database triggers have access to all the old values. So those can all go in and we have full logging with partial updates. And similarly, stateless updates, that's all available. Uh, there's no stateless updates in Hibernate, so kind of leave that one off. So in terms of the differences, um, with databases that have SQL 2011 um, support built in, like Oracle and DB2 and SQL Server, etc., uh, eBeam just needs to support the as of and versions between syntax, so it doesn't need to do anything else really. Uh, with databases that don't have SQL 2000 support built in, uh, we could simulate that in eBeam by generating the database triggers. And both eBeam and uh, Inverse, in this case, will have history tables. So the difference really in this sense is that the database centric approach with eBeam to make it in, to bring it in line with SQL 2011. Uh, the last point here is if we don't want audit history in our old TP database, what do we do? Um, and for eBeam, we'll use changelog. So we'll do a quick comparison of changelog with these other two. So changelog is an application centric approach like Inverse. So that means that eBeam's listening for insert, update, deletes, and it's putting out changelog entries based on that. Um, in terms of what it produces, it's typically gonna produce JSON log files. It's, it's an API, so you can do whatever you like, really, but um, that's typically what's going to happen. Um, it's got the same limitations as an application-centric approach of uh, no bulk updates are not included in the change log, and external updates also won't get included in the change log. Um, in terms of performance, yeah, we, we're logging externally to the database. It's kind of why we have it. For partial updates, it's okay. We have deltas, but we don't have the full version of the, of the if you like, the beam or the, or the entry as at that time. So we have the deltas for what the partial update had. And similarly, for the status updates, we don't have any of the old values. So in these cases, if we're trying to rebuild the beam, you know, as at, you know, you know, an hour ago or something like that, we'd actually need to go through all of the previous history as well to build the beam as at that time. But again, the limitations are 
you know, external updates, bulk updates aren't included. So that's the difference. Cheers.